When it comes to learning programming languages, video courses are always my go-to. This is because they're engaging, easy to follow, and feel personal, but they do have their drawbacks. Often you're just passively watching an instructor code, which can really limit how much knowledge you retain. Plus, creating video takes time, so courses can quickly become outdated. Now recently, I've been encouraged to try text-based learning platforms instead. These platforms are interactive. They let you code along in real time, provide instant feedback can often contain more up-to-date resources. So today I'm putting one of these platforms to the test. The team at Educative reached out and asked me to try their platform. Now since I need to learn the Rust programming language for an upcoming project, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to give text-based learning a shot. So in this video, I'll share my experience using Educative to learn Rust from exploring their platform to working through one of their courses and let you know how it compares to video-based learning. Now, before we dive into the Educative platform, let me take a few moments to go over some of its core features. Unlike traditional video-based courses, Educative focuses on interactive text-based lessons. This format allows learners to progress at their own pace, making it easier to revisit complex concepts without the need to rewind or pause videos. The lessons are designed to keep learners engaged with quizzes, coding exercises, and interactive graphs. One of Educative's most most exciting features is its embedded coding environment. There's no need to install or configure development setups. Everything runs directly on your browser. This means you can dive into coding the moment you start a course. For someone like me learning Rust, this means I don't have to worry about any setup or configuration challenges and can focus entirely on learning the language. The platform does include over 300 real world projects that help learners apply their knowledge practically. These projects are especially valuable for developers looking to build portfolio pieces or who just want to gain confidence in using different languages. Courses on Educative are crafted by specially selected industry professionals and subject matter experts. Each course undergoes rigorous technical and grammatical reviews to ensure high quality content that meets the unique needs of developers. From beginner friendly introductions to advanced concepts, Educative covers a broad spectrum of skills. Whether you're preparing for coding interviews, learning a language like Rust from scratch, or diving into specialized areas like generative AI or full stack development, there's something for everyone. Regular assessments throughout courses test your understanding and provide targeted feedback. Upon completing a course, learners can earn certificates that showcase their accomplishments, a great addition to your resume or LinkedIn profile. Now that we've explored the powerful features that make Educative such a standout platform, let's see it in action. I'm going to log into the platform and see how I can go about starting to learn programming in Rust. Okay, so I've logged into the Educative platform now and I can see that I'm on my dashboard here. It's given me some recommended courses, this one about grokking the modern system design interview. I can see my learning streak is on here. So I did have a look on here yesterday, so I'm actually on a one day streak. So that's good, that encourages me to keep learning. I can see I could set a learning calendar over here as well. This would help me to stay motivated, no doubt. And it looks like we can get certification in courses as well at the bottom, so that's good to know. So before I dive into learning Rust, let's have a look at some of the other features that's on offer on Educative. So if I go into Explore over here, it looks like this is where I can search for all of the different courses. It looks like I've got stuff here on interview prep, different technologies, etc. Let me take a look at this AI mock interview. So this looks like it will generate an interview if I was going for a job at a certain company. It looks like we can do system design interviews and it looks like these even target particular employers. I can see Uber, Ticketmaster, other companies here. So it's really interesting you can actually do company specific interviews. Really good way to prep if, you, if you've got a big interview coming up. Let me go back and look at the other options. We've also got the cloud labs here as well. Okay, so I think I've used these with other providers. So when you're learning things like AWS or serverless technology, it's often very hard to just do it in an environment on your local machine. But I think what these cloud labs do is that they actually spawn up all of the resources on a platform like AWS, leave it up there temporarily just while you're working through the lab and then let you work through um, whatever is in, in the lesson. So these would again be a really good thing to access if you wanted to learn cloud-based technologies. If I take a look at the personalized paths, so it looks like from here I could just fill in a few questions and then it would give me like a personalized path that I could work through. So let me give this a shot, I'm just going to click on create my personalized path. I'm gonna say I want to learn something new. I'm gonna choose 
programming language. I'm going to choose Rust because I want to learn Rust. And for now, I'm just going to choose the Rust Essentials. Okay, I can set my learning goal here. This is pretty cool. So I'm just going to set that to light for this. And then I'm going to hit Generate Path. So now if I click on Start Learning, and this is really cool. It looks like it's actually generated like a whole course for me. So if we look over here on the left, we can see we've got like the Getting Started module, I think a Variables module, data types, all different bits to go through about Rust. So this has just been created on the fly. This is really, really cool, really good to know. So before I start going through that, I'm just going to take a look at if there's anything else on Educative that's interesting to me. Uh, so I'm just going to take a look at these projects here. And as I said before, I think Educative does have over 300 real world projects that you can go through. So I guess this, these are where you can search for those and then work through those projects to get your skills built up. So one that jumps out to me is this Rust data engineering one. So if I take a look at that, it explains what I'm gonna learn to do, some of the skills that I'm gonna get, gives me a project description, of the project that I'm gonna build using again, a Rust based system. And it also suggests some similar projects at the bottom here as well. And that's good, it says the project will only take an hour to complete and I'll be able to get a certificate at the end as well. So again, for someone like me learning Rust, this would be a really cool thing for me to go through, a really good place to start. Let me finally just take a look at the skill paths as well. So again, it looks like we've got skill paths for lots of different types of programming languages or lots of different objectives. So again, I'm just gonna search here for Rust and see if anything comes up. And straight away, I can see this skill path for becoming a Rust developer. So let me click on that. So here I've got what looks like a pretty in-depth skill path. I can see that there's five modules in here. There's a whole 138 hours of learning with 600 66 lessons and lots of other bits and pieces. I can see this looks like a really comprehensive syllabus. So again, for someone like me learning Rust, this would be a really good thing to go through. I'm not going to go through all of this in this video because I think I'd like to just start with maybe a more um, essentials course, high level course, just to get a feel for the Educative platform. But then once I'm comfortable using Educative, I probably would look to work through something like this. So let me go back to the Explore tab now. And again, I'm just going to search for Rust. I want to filter my courses by beginner. And this course here jumps out to me, this Rust programming language. This looks like a good beginner course. So I'm going to click on this one. So it looks like this is a nine hour course, which is quite reasonable. And this one looks like it's a good one for me to start with. So again, I can get an idea of the course overview. I get an idea of what I'm going to learn, the course content, etc. So this looks like a really good one to go through. So I'm going to start learning on this course. So I can see on the left here, this is my syllabus, all of the different lessons that I'm going to go through, all of the different modules. So it looks like the going to start with a nice introduction to Rust and then start going into the Rust basics, learning about variables, data types, and then more advanced concepts. So again, in the first module here, I've got some stuff to read through about what is Rust. It's got some examples as well of who's using Rust, which companies are using it, and what I can expect to learn again from this course. Once I've read through that, I can just tick this to say it's marked as completed. We can see that's marked as completed over here. We can see over here as well, this has gone to green. We can see that this has gone to 1%. And completed. So there we are. I'm off on my journey learning Rust. I'm going to click next to go to the next module. And again, this one's explained to me why I need to learn Rust. That's very interesting as well. So I'm going to read through this. Okay. And now it looks like straight away I'm writing the Hello World program. So here I can see that this is how I do the Hello World program in Rust. It looks like I can just run this in the browser. So if I run it in the browser and I can get the output there straight away. So I've got a bit more explanation here on the anatomy of the Hello World program. And it looks like we're going straight into a quiz here. So what's the keyword for declaring a function. I think it was fn. That's correct. Go to the next question. What's the output here? Two print lines. I guess it's this one. Ah, so I actually got it wrong. So, ah, okay. A semicolon can be omitted. Ah, okay. So I hadn't noticed that before. Okay. So I can only omit a semicolon at the at last statement. So you see by like doing this quiz interactively there straight away, by actually getting an answer wrong, that actually cements my learning much more than if I just blindly read through if I hadn't done that quiz. Okay, so now we're just starting to learn about the basic formatting of Rust. So here it's explaining what a single placeholder is. Again, let me just run this code, see what the output looks like. And it looks like I can actually edit, start editing the code in here now as well. So I've just added these three X's. I try and run it. Cool. So I can actually start just typing the code now in the browser if I want to play around with with the code of the different functions, etc. So this is really cool. Like it's really fun to actually be able to start typing the code right straight away and start playing around, trying different things. You get like the information here for you, but it's actually really good that you can actually interact with the code examples here as well. I actually really like that. It's something I'm not used to from just doing video based. 
learning. Okay, so I've worked a few, a few lessons now and now I'm coming up to the first challenge. So again, like this is really early in the course, but straight away I'm actually being asked to complete a coding exercise. So it looks like I have to print the following statement to the console. I'm learning Rust programming language. Let me see if I can remember how to do that. Okay, so I've put in what I think is the answer. I'm gonna try test and it looks like my test has passed okay. So it looks like I, it's worked okay. If I was a bit stuck, I think I could say I need a hint and that would tell me which method to use in this case print if I wanted to just see the solution yes I could click here and then it would just give me the solution so if I was just getting frustrated I could just see the solution there or otherwise I could just work for it myself now if I go on to the next page it's actually got the solution and that's all explained to me in quite detail here as well obviously this is quite a simple example because we're right at the start of the course but I can imagine as we get deeper in this will become a lot more worthwhile so it looks like we've got a second challenge here as well so this time I need to display output using placeholders so I put in here what I think is the answer with these five different print line statements. Oh, that's interesting. So their solution is actually different to how I did it. I did it in a slightly different way. If I go back, I did, um, I put all of the numbers kind of grouped together. Whereas if I look in their solution, they put commas between the numbers. So I think we kind of got to the same answer. We just got there in different ways. And this is the thing with programming, that there's always going to be different solutions to answers. There's often is no right answer, even with something like relatively simple like this challenge. Challenge. I imagine this will happen a lot later on in the course. But again, by trying to do it myself first, I can it reinforces my learning and then I can see the solution right away and get an idea of another way that I could have done it. So again, I've only been using it for a few minutes, but I already feel like I'm learning more and more about Rust. I feel like I'm retaining a lot of this knowledge. I could really see myself spending, you know, even just 25 minutes or so a day on a platform like this. I think it would be very easy to just log in at a lunch break or something like that, work through a bit of the code, and then and, you know like make a lot of progress on the course over time okay so after spending quite a bit of time on the educative platform one thing I've noticed is how much faster text-based learning feels compared to video courses in fact let's compare the features of text-based learning on a platform like educative with traditional video courses firstly let's talk about learning pace with text-based learning you obviously have full control over the learning pace you can skim through familiar topics or dive deeply into challenging sections without waiting for an instructor to catch up. With video courses, the pace is set by the instructor, which can sometimes feel too slow or too fast, depending on your prior knowledge. When it comes to revisiting content with text-based learning, it's easy to search for specific keywords or revisit sections or just copy code snippets directly into your editor. Meanwhile, finding specific details can be tedious with video courses. You'll often need to scrub through timelines or rewatch whole sections to locate the information you need. Platforms like Educative boasts a lot of interactivity with features like integrated quizzes, coding exercises, and hands-on projects directly tied into the lessons. This keeps you actively engaged and helps reinforce what you're learning. Most video courses, on the other hand, do lack built-in interactivity. You'll usually need separate tools or environments to practice what you've learned. Another consideration is your actual learning environment, actually, where you're based. So with text-based learning, it's perfect for any setting, whether you're in a noisy cafe or a quiet office. No headphones are required and there's no need to worry about any background distractions. Video courses meanwhile they'll typically require a quiet space and headphones to fully focus on the audio and the visuals. Now visual demonstrations are one place where video courses do have an advantage but even saying that while text-based courses may lack live demonstrations they often include diagrams, code snippets and interactive examples that illustrate concepts effectively. But of course, videos excel at providing real-time visual demonstrations, making them great for learners who benefit from seeing processes unfold step by step. Finally, in terms of engagement, text-based learning encourages active participation with self-paced lessons and interactive elements that keep you involved. Video courses, meanwhile, they rely heavily on the instructor's delivery style and the supporting visuals to maintain that engagement. 
engagement. So which approach is best for you? Well, both methods have their appeal. Video courses are ideal if you prefer guided walkthroughs and visual demonstrations. However, if you value efficiency, flexibility, and hands-on practice built right into your lessons, especially when tackling a practical language like Rust, as I was in this video, then text-based learning platforms like Educative might be better suited. They let you focus on mastering skills at your own pace while keeping the experience interactive and engaging. If you've been thinking about trying text-based learning, then why not give Educative a shot? You'll find a link in the description below that'll let you sign up for the platform with a 50% discount on any annual subscription plan. And also let me know in the comments below what you think about text-based versus video-based learning. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts. But that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.